As world leaders try to figure out how to deal with the Syrian conflict, Iraqi security forces are doing all they can to try to prevent the violence from spilling over into their country, a country that is still on shaky grounds after U.S. troops finally left in 2011. Yesterday, the Iraqi branch of al-Qaeda claimed responsibility for a series of car bombings that killed 50 people over the weekend. Will Iraqi security forces continue to try to root out extremists in the country? The Special Inspector General for Iraq Reconstruction just released its final report this week. SIGUR is the group that we turn to in order to expose fraud or abuse and misuse of taxpayer funds in Iraq. But with this final report, the group is disbanded, despite the fact that there are still serious concerns over monetary waste in the country. So is this the end of accountability in Iraq? For more, I was joined earlier by Michael O'Brien. He's a former contractor and the author of America's Failure in Iraq. And I asked him if anything new came out of this final report. Well, actually, um, it's not what's coming out. It's what's not coming out. Um, if you look at the report that's on the... Uh, that's been uh, disseminated, um, it, it kind of gives glossing uh, overviews, um, you know, narrative description of, you know, the purpose of it, their mission and all that, cites a few stories and things like that. But what I really wanted to do uh, in, the, in this uh, report was I, I saw in the uh, table of contents there was a section called suspensions and debarments uh, in the uh, IG report. Well, you know, that's what the IG is all about, any IG. IG is, is to investigate, investigate waste, fraud, and abuse. And if somebody really um, crosses the line, they're debarred, meaning they're barred from being able to do further uh, government contracts, either permanently or for a period of time and all that, or suspended. So uh, there's a very, very, uh, a, a little bit in the entire uh, report that's about 80 some odd pages long, there's, there's this little section here and there's this and that's it and that's it and but then it refers you to appendix c i believe it's c b or c and it says uh, list of those suspended or uh, and or debarred so you go to us uh, in you know so i went in in the report to appendix c there is no appendix c it's blank uh and it says in the fine print um, appendix C, I don't know if it's right here, but it, anyway, it says appendix B, uh, appendices B and C are not included in this version of the report, meaning the public version. But if you want to see it, go to www.sigir.mil. So I did. So I went to, I went to that website. That's their, the SIGGERS website. I couldn't find it. I mean... I looked and I went to different tabs. I couldn't find it. I typed in suspension, you know, search, nothing. So, it, so you know, good luck. I'm not saying it's not there, but good luck trying to find it. It's yeah. not easy to find. It doesn't pop out. Suspension, list of suspended and disbarred. And it also says in this one little bit right here uh, that since 2003, 285 individuals and companies were either suspended or debarred. Well, what does that mean? Let's bring up some of the other things that the Cigar, uh, the Cigar, excuse me, uh, actually uh, found out. This report. So they did 220 reports um, that made 487 recommendations that would potentially save 973 million dollars. It launched 639 investigations into claims of abuse and fraud, resulting in 42 arrests, 112 indictments, 90 convictions, and 76 sentencing. So given all of this. There's still more, you're saying, to be determined, to be found out. Well, not necessarily so. What I'm zeroing in on here is who were they? I want to know who they were. It's like, uh, you know, if they're keeping it a big secret, uh, you know, I've got experience in contracting with the federal government, and if you keep it a big secret, and, and I mean, you know, you can do a FOIA request and find out who are these companies and individuals that were suspended or debarred. I mean, th th they did a lot of work. I'm not saying they didn't do a lot of work. They really, really, really did. And if you look at one of the appendices, I think it's Appendix A, lists all of the current, you know, for employees through the years since 2003 who worked for SIGIR, uh, S-I-G-I-R, and it's, it's, it's hundreds. 
I mean, they, I personally know uh, uh, one, one uh, young, younger fellow that, uh, that worked there for quite some time. They really, really did do a lot of work. Um, but, you know, to be debarred, the word bar means you cannot do contracts with the federal government or the Department of Defense for some period of time. And for contracting officers who uh, work for the federal government, they want to know if you're on that list. They, sh you know, they, they shouldn't have to really go digging like I was digging today in their website. You know, not a huge issue, okay? Th those are a lot of major statistics, but let's face it. It was a treasure trove. They had so much to go digging up. When I was over there, uh, before I left, I went to their offices in the embassy, uh, in the uh, Republican Palace and uh, in Baghdad, and I met with uh, a couple of their people. And, and all they did, and I, I, I relayed to them um, th uh, things that, um, that I thought they ought to look into, directly related to waste, fraud, and abuse. Uh, and the guy said to me, um, we'll, we'll go to our website. Very interesting. Go to our website. I'm right there at their offices in Baghdad. And all he said to me was, go to our website. And most likely because I was a civilian. I wasn't a senior ranking military officer, uh, rank of colonel or above. So he wasn't going to listen to the, give me the time of day. Now, we have a short amount of time left. but. Moving forward, is there anything that uh, Sigar in Afghanistan can learn that Sigir discovered in Iraq in order to get the reconstruction efforts going? Well, you know, they can always learn from, uh, you know, from the, the, their predecessors, but S-I-G-A-R for Afghanistan, uh, they've, been, they've been in business for quite some time. But one of the things that uh, I found very, very interesting, um, very shocking actually, was a couple of weeks ago there was a report uh, in the news, in the media, where uh, SIGAR, the in, in Inspector General for uh, uh, Afghanistan Reconstruction, uh, has evidence, cold evidence, of companies that are doing contracting to the uh, Department of Defense in Afghanistan uh, that there's absolute affiliation with Al Qaeda. They're backed by Al Qaeda. They're affiliated in one way or another with Al Qaeda. They've presented this to the Department of Defense to the contracting officers over there. They won't do anything about it. And SIGAR came out and was quoted as saying, this is ridiculous. Uh, we've presented them with the evidence, but they won't do anything because they want to give these firms due process. I wrote a, a blog about it on my website, americasfailureinteract.com, going back about two weeks ago when this news first came out. That's ridiculous. That's just plain ridiculous. That's crazy. And that is why um, institutions like these inspector generals are necessary in order to point these problems out. Michael O'Brien, author of America's Failure in Iraq, thank you so much for coming in. Thanks for having me.